Hey, Damien here from Cloud Technology Experts. In this video, I would like to share with you on how to create a pod from the CLI. But first, let's understand what is a pod. In Kubernetes, a pod is a group of one or more containers scheduled to a node. Pods share the same fate and serve as a unit of scheduling, deployment, and horizontal scalability. Containers within a pod can share the same IP address, can mount the same volume, and are within the same namespace. To create a pod from the CLI, we need to use a Kubernetes utility called kubectl. There are two ways, two main ways we can create pod from the CLI. We can use the kubectl create command, or we can use the kubectl run command. Now, there are three main differences between kubectl run and kubectl create. With kubectl run, you can only create a pod with one container. But with kubectl create, you can specify as many containers as you like inside the YAML file. Secondly, with kubectl run, a deployment object is automatically created. With kubectl create, a deployment object is not created automatically except you explicitly specify that you want a deployment object created. We will talk about deployment in another video. Third, when you use a kubectl run command, you don't need a manifest file to create the pod. With kubectl create, you must have to first of all create your manifest file in JSON or YAML syntax. Once that is ready, you can pass the YAML file as an argument to kubectl create command. In another video, I'll show you how to do that. Great. Now that we understood the differences between kubectl run and kubectl create, and we also understood what a pod is, let's go ahead and create a pod from the CLI. Okay, so now let's create a pod using kubectl run command. kubectl run pod one minus minus image equals nginx. Great. Notice what it says here. It says a deployment pod one has been created. That is what I said earlier. Each time you use the kubectl run command to create a pod, a deployment object is automatically created. Let's view the pod. kubectl get pod. It shows us here that a pod called this name is running and is ready. Notice how the name is formed. Even though we get a pod, pod one, the name is actually formed by adding some random characters to the name that we gave it. Again, this is a feature when you use the kubectl run command. Now let's describe the pod to see the details about the pod. For example, to see the container inside the pod. So we do kubectl describe pod and we give it a name this name here now there are a lot of details but I just want to show you the, con the section under the containers this section here shows the containers that was created in our case there's just one container created so that is the one we have here notice here it says the image is Nginx. That was the image that we gave it when we run the kubectl run command. Okay. So now we can uh, we we'll see the details about the pod. Let us see how the pod is managed. We're going to try to delete the pod, and we'll see that the deployment object will try to replace it immediately. kubectl uh, delete and we give the name see the pod is deleted but if we do kubectl get pod see the previous one has been terminated and a new one is being created again this is what I shared earlier 
Each time you delete a pod, the deployment object will ensure that the pod is replaced. So we can see that the previous pod was this one and the new pod is this one here. So if you want to delete the pod, you first have to ensure that you delete the deployment. So let's do that and see what happens. Well, first, now let's view the deployment. kubectl git deploy. So you have, now there's a deployment called pod one. So let's do kubectl delete deploy pod one. Now you say deployment pod one is deleted. If we run the command to get a pod, so it's now terminating the pod. No resources found. So let's see if we can get, it's gone. So what does that show us? When we create a pod using kubectl run command, a deployment object is also created. To manage the pod, it's monitoring the pod. Each time the pod goes down, it brings it back on. So the only way you can delete the pod is to delete the deployment. And once you delete the deployment, that will in turn delete the pod. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you in this video. To show you that when you use kubectl run command to create a pod, a deployment object is also automatically created and you can manage a pod using deployment. Also in this video, you understood how to create a pod from the CLI. In the next video, I will show you how to create a pod using kubectl create command. With that, we have to first create a manifest file and then we can use the manifest file to create a pod. I hope you liked the video. If you do, comment below, like this video, and remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more useful cloud-related videos, just like this one. Again, Damien from Cloud Technology Experts, and thank you for watching.